Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we discussed the branches coming off of the thoracic aorta. Here we're going to continue downward through the descending aorta and talk about the branches coming off of the abdominal aorta. Now, the question you might have is what actually separates or distinguishes between whether we're talking about the thoracic aorta and the abdominal aorta. Well, let me ask you a question. When all the way back in Anatomy and Physiology 1, what was the structure, the anatomical structure, that separated the thoracic cavity from the abdominal pelvic cavity, or just the abdominal cavity? And your answer would be the diaphragm. So it's the same thing here. The diaphragm is what separates these two regions of the descending aorta. So of course we have, here's the aorta, the ascending part of it coming off of the uh, left ventricle. It's going to arch around here. We of course have these three branches coming off of the aortic arch. Here's our descending aorta. And pretty much once it starts descending all the way down until it touches the superior surface of the diaphragm, all this we call the thoracic aorta. And the branches that came off of that were serving the structures in the thoracic cavity, such as the heart or the lungs, things like that. And then we see that the aorta, as it descends downward, actually crosses through the middle of the diaphragm. It doesn't go in front of it or behind it or to the left or right. There's actually sort of a hole in the diaphragm, okay, a hiatus. And that aorta is going to descend directly through that hole. And there's also other things that go through there, like the inferior vena cava, things like that, but it goes through the diaphragm. And when it exits the diaphragm inferiorly, from then on out, we refer to it as the abdominal aorta. And the abdominal aorta is going to really continue until this bifurcation down here at the bottom. Each of these bifurcations are the common iliac arteries. So once we get to that bifurcation, we no longer consider it the abdominal aorta. Okay, and here we're going to talk about the branches that come off of that. And I've got three different figures here that we're going to look at, and each one of these has an advantage, so we'll be flipping uh, between these. Okay, now this picture, even though it's low resolution, I actually like it a lot because uh, the major arteries that come off of this are pretty distinguishable in this picture. But really, to learn this, we ought to have some reference points, some arteries that we look at that are more recognizable than others and that we can use to figure out where things are, because especially in this middle region, it appears to get kind of crowded, right? So the two arteries that I like to use as a reference point are the celiac trunk up here at the top, and then the inferior mesenteric artery down here at the bottom. And when I talk about these arteries, what we're really thinking about is where they originate off of the aorta. Yes, they, 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 you know, they come off and they extend in all sorts of directions, but I'm really talking about where they originate. And the reason that the celiac trunk, I think, is a good reference point is because it originates so close to the bottom of the diaphragm, but also because, notice, it actually branches three times. Okay? It branches into three separate arteries and they kind of go all different directions. So that makes the celiac trunk fairly recognizable. If we go down to the bottom, the other one I like to use as a reference point is the inferior mesenteric artery. And yes, we can look at it down here, of course, but I'm talking about where it originates. And the reason I like this one is because, first of all, it's one of the closest ones, if not the closest, that we see closest to the bifurcation down here at the bottom, and it does not have a left or a right, just like the celiac trunk. So at least there we're being consistent. Now I will say this, uh, there is another artery that we're going to see below the inferior mesenteric artery. There's a left and right lumbar artery. Uh, that one sometimes is omitted. Even in this picture right here, you see that that artery is not shown. Um, it's a very thin artery, and so for that reason, I don't like to use it as a landmark. The inferior mesenteric artery is going to be the thicker one. And so if we know where the celiac trunk is in the inferior mesenteric artery, we can kind of piece together what's between, and that's actually very helpful. Okay, so let's talk about these arteries that are coming off of here. So let's actually go to this picture. So we're going to start with the celiac trunk. The celiac trunk is the only artery here that's going to come off and immediately branch three times. We don't really ever see that too much, so it's going to branch three times. In one case, the left branch is going to go towards the spleen, therefore we call that the splenic artery. And that can help you remember which one is which, because the spleen is on the patient's left side. So going left would have to be the splenic artery. 
Then we have one that's going to kind of come off forward. It looks like it's coming off uh, to the patient's right here, but it really comes out more toward the screen, and it'll actually loop around sort of over to this side, and that's the left gastric artery. The left gastric artery is going to serve the stomach, okay? and it will also serve portions of the esophagus, so there's esophageal branches that will come off of this, but for now, just learn it as the left gastric artery that's serving the stomach. And then the one that's going to go directly right is going to be the common hepatic artery. And this, you can imagine, is going to serve the liver, which is on the patient's right side, at least most of it. Okay? So the one going to the patient's left of the splenic artery and the one going to the patient's right is the common hepatic artery. So if we look at this picture right here, we can see on the left side we have the unpaired arteries. Those are ones that do not have a left and a right, and then paired ones over here. So we see the celiac trunk right here. It diverges into three separate arteries. So again, the common hepatic artery is going to serve the liver. It will also serve portions of the stomach, the gallbladder, the duodenum, which is the initial part of the small intestine, and the pancreas. So the common hepatic artery is going to serve a lot of things. But if you associate it with one thing, associate it with the liver. And understand that this artery is not part of the portal system. So you've probably heard of the hepatic portal vein. Okay, that is not part of this, not part of the portal system. Okay? This is just the artery that serves the liver and delivers nutrients to those cells. And we had the splenic artery. That went toward the patient's left. So obviously it's going to serve the spleen. It's also going to serve uh, regions of the stomach and the pancreas. And then we had the left gastric artery. This is the one you want to associate with the stomach. But as I mentioned, it's also going to serve portions of the esophagus. So that what we're going to see in a minute is there's esophageal branches that come off of the left gastric artery. So let's take a look at the celiac trunk on this picture. So it comes off of the abdominal aorta, and it branches. So going toward the right, we have the common hepatic artery. Okay? And then we have the left gastric artery, which is going to serve the stomach. And then here's our splenic artery. If you look at the left gastric artery, you see these esophageal branches. Uh, there's part of the esophagus, the lower part of it, is actually going to be served by these branches that come off of the left gastric artery. Okay? Now, one thing I also want you to notice, because in some courses this may be important, notice that the celiac trunk is going to originate on the part of the abdominal aorta that lies adjacent to the T12 vertebrae. Each segment of this abdominal aorta is going to lie adjacent to a particular vertebra. So, for example, up here we have T12. Then we get into the lumbar regions, L1, L2, L3, and L4. The L4 region is actually where the abdominal aorta ends and bifurcates into the common iliac arteries. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now before we go any further, let's actually go back and look at this picture. We're going to descend downward, but before we do that, let's actually look up here. Because if we look above the celiac trunk, what we see here is we have the phrenic arteries. And these are actually going to be the inferior phrenic arteries. Now when you hear the term phrenic, you ought to associate that with the diaphragm. So these arteries are going to serve the diaphragm. And notice they're the only one here that we're going to look at that's going to originate above the celiac trunk. Actually in some cases, in some models like wire models, the phrenic arteries may not even be there. Okay, um, so it's not common, as common to talk about these. But again, if we look at this picture, we see here, this would actually be the patient's uh, right inferior phrenic artery, and it would go up and serve the right part of the diaphragm. Okay, again, here's our inferior phrenic arteries, the diaphragm, and we also see, again, an inferior portion of the esophagus, just as was the case for the left gastric artery. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now, I mentioned our two landmarks for the celiac trunk and the inferior mesenteric artery. What we're going to do at this point is kind of fill in the gaps between those, okay? And we're looking at where they originate off of the abdominal aorta. So the one directly beneath the celiac trunk is going to be the superior mesenteric artery, okay? So notice that it originates right here and it does not have a left or a right. Going down, just a little bit, we see the renal arteries. Now, of course, there are two kidneys, left and a right kidney, so it would make sense that there's a left and a right renal artery. This one over here would be the patient's left renal artery. Okay? And then if we go down, just before we hit the inferior mesenteric arteries origin, we see the gonadal arteries. 
Now again, there's going to be a left and right gonadal artery because males and females have two gonads. In the case of males, they of course have testes and females have ovaries. So actually when you talk about the gonadal arteries, uh, you actually refer to them by the gender of the person. So for example, if you're talking about the gonadal artery in a male, it would be the testicular artery with a left and a right, of course. In females, it would be the ovarian artery. However, if you're just talking about it generally, like this picture, like we couldn't tell what gender this is, we could just call it the gonadal arteries. But if you knew the gender of the person, you would, of course, be more specific. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now, if we look here at this picture, we can see the levels that these originate off of. We see that the superior mesenteric artery is going to originate off of the lower part of the L1 region of the abdominal aorta. Now, one thing I want you to understand about the superior mesenteric artery is it serves pretty much all of the small intestine, but it also serves the initial part of the large intestine. Okay? So you're going to have different branches that come off of this that are going to be named according to the region of the intestine that they supply. For example, here we have the jejunal arteries, which would serve the jejunum. These are the ileal arteries that would serve the ileum. Here's the ileocolic artery. This would be the area where the ileocecal valve is, where the ileum merges with the cecum of the large intestine. Then we have the right colic. This would be the ascending colon. Middle colic would be the transverse colon. And then this one over here is the inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery. Okay, it's a tongue twister, but the gist of this is it's going to serve the parts of the duodenum. Okay? So the thing about this artery is it serves a little bit more than the inferior one does. Superior mesenteric artery serves all of the small intestine and then the initial parts of the large intestine. So the cecum region, the ascending colon, and then the transverse colon. Once we get to the descending part, that's actually going to be the job of the inferior mesenteric artery. So again, if we look at the superior, here we go, mesenteric artery, yes, it's going to be part of the pancreas, but the small intestine, the appendix, because the appendix comes off of the cecum, and the first two-thirds of the large intestine, so the ascending and transverse colon. Okay. So there's our superior mesenteric artery. Going downwards, again, we have the renal arteries. Those, of course, serve the kidneys. Okay? Now, another thing I wanted to point out about the renal arteries um, is that they come off just below the superior mesenteric artery, but they come off in the top part of the L2 region. Okay? The other thing I wanted to mention about the renal artery is notice that, first of all, it originates below the superior mesenteric artery, but it also originates off the top part of the L2 region. Okay? So that's our first one that originates off the L2 region. Near the bottom, about two-thirds of the way down the L2 region, we have the gonadal arteries. And like I mentioned, in males they would be the testicular arteries, and in females the ovarian arteries. Okay? And then that brings us down to the inferior mesenteric artery. This one is going to originate about halfway down the L3 region. And as I mentioned, the inferior mesenteric artery is going to be serving the latter part of the large intestine. So if we go back here and look at this, it's going to be serving the descending colon, the sigmoid colon, and the rectum. Because remember, the rectum is really still part of the large intestine. Okay? So these are going to be served by the inferior mesenteric artery. Okay, so just a quick recap of what we've seen up to this point, starting at the celiac trunk. We have the celiac trunk at the top, then we go down to the superior mesenteric artery, then the renal arteries, then the gonadal arteries, and then the inferior mesenteric artery. And those arteries right there, all five of them, are big to know. Okay, most classes, if you get tested on one of these in the abdominal aorta, it's probably going to be one of those, a good bet, probably 60-70% chance. Okay. There are a few other minor ones that I do want to go over, though. One of them is what's called the suprarenal artery. Okay. So I think it's actually shown on here. Yes, but it's under a different name. So here it's under the name adrenal artery. And that might give you a, a guess of what the adrenal artery serves. It's, of course, the adrenal glands. So why on this picture did they call it the suprarenal artery? Well, suprarenal is an alternate name for adrenal. Okay? In fact, it's an older name. Usually everybody calls it adrenal glands now. That's what it's known as. But suprarenal, if you break that name down, renal means kidney. Supra means on top of. 
And so literally the adrenal glands sit on top of the kidneys like a hat. They kind of look like a hat, actually. They're sort of in a triangular shape, so to speak. And that's not actually as apparent here. But the suprarenal arteries are going to serve the corresponding adrenal glands that sit atop the kidneys. So there's a left and right suprarenal artery. Now, the next thing I'm going to say isn't too important, but I do want to mention it. In addition to the suprarenal or adrenal arteries that serve the adrenal glands, we also see coming off of the renal artery. This is the renal artery. There is an inferior suprarenal artery that comes off of that. Notice the renal artery branches once, and we get an inferior suprarenal artery. This artery also serves the adrenal glands. So the adrenal gland is going to have two major sources of blood. Out of the two, the most important one is going to be the suprarenal artery, of which there's a left and a right, but then also the inferior suprarenal artery coming off of the renal artery. The other thing here is to notice that the suprarenal artery is going to originate at about the same level of the superior mesenteric artery. Now the very last thing I wanted to mention going down the abdominal aorta are these lumbar arteries, of which there are a left and a right. Now the lumbar arteries, uh, we don't even see them in this picture right here. In fact, the lumbar arteries are often omitted. They're very thin arteries. Okay? In this picture, we can see one of them. This would be the patient's right lumbar artery. And the lumbar artery is going to serve the vertebrae, spinal cord, abdominal wall, lumbar region. And pretty much any muscles that are in that lumbar area are going to be served by this artery. A great example of a muscle that's going to be involved in that is the quadratus lumborum. Um, if you've ever shadowed in anything like a physical therapy clinic, you'd find that this is actually a very common muscle to be either injured or sore or strained in some way because as human beings in Western society, we're often hunched over over a desk, we stretch out that muscle, and, and so on and so forth. But in any case, I digress. The lumbar arteries are going to serve that region. And the lumbar arteries, notice, are actually going to originate at the very top of L4. Okay? They're actually going to originate below the inferior mesenteric artery. But since these are often omitted from a lot of models and things like that, uh, I don't like to use it as a landmark. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of all these branches that are coming off the abdominal aorta. And let's actually go back now and do a very quick recap going down the abdominal aorta. So at the top, or at least our first landmark, is the celiac trunk, which branches three times. We go down to the superior mesenteric artery. Go down a little bit, we've got the renal arteries, left and right. Going down, gonadal arteries, left and right. And then a little bit below that, we have the inferior mesenteric artery. Now, a few other things that we talked about. Remember, above the celiac trunk, we do have those inferior phrenic arteries, but watch out, those are sometimes omitted. Then at the same level as the superior mesenteric artery, we have the suprarenal arteries, which serve the adrenal glands. And then coming down beneath the inferior mesenteric artery, close to this bifurcation, we have the left and right lumbar arteries, which are not shown here. Now, as I mentioned, we go down, the artery bifurcates into two smaller arteries. They're still pretty big, but they're smaller than the abdominal aorta. These are the common iliac arteries, and these are where we're going to pick up in the next video. We're going to find that these actually are going to go down into the legs, and they're again going to branch several times, but they're going to serve different regions of each leg. Okay, so hopefully I made this clear. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.